What is up, Flavor Family? It is Bobby and Art back at the grocery store for the long-awaited, big-time requested coffee review video. I have been doing a deep dive into coffee the last five or seven days, and we are ready to rock this video out. Let's go upstairs and talk about everything coffee. Bagged coffee, whole bean and ground, decaf coffee, instant coffee, coffee creamers, cold brew coffee, coffee drinks, and more, you guys. Before we get up there and do that, you're gonna wanna join the Flav City family, my friends. Go ahead and click that red subscribe button. Heck, better yet, there's a bell icon right below the video. Enable all notifications, because we have two videos on the weekends and one video during the week. That video is a live stream. We're making recipes from start to finish, and you do not, I repeat, do not wanna miss out on that. All right, let's start in the coffee aisle with K-Cups, something that is super popular, but I think you should probably avoid K-Cups for a couple reasons. Number one, it's expensive, you guys. If you figure out the price per pound for the coffee in here, it's like $50 a pound for substandard coffee. They're not putting very good quality in here for the most part, right? But the problem is it sits here for God knows how long. You don't know when it was ground, and it's just not that good of coffee. We can do better. But the most important reason, I think, to avoid K-Cups is, what is the K-Cup made of? Oh. <laughs> This is what I do at the store. I drop things left and right. What is it made of? It has an aluminum foil top, or if you live in the UK, aluminium, and it has a plastic bottom. This is very troublesome to me because we're talking about just boiled water, maybe 200 degrees Fahrenheit, going through aluminum and then plastic. Guys, that makes me really nervous, right? I get nervous about drinking too much water out of plastic bottles because of nanoparticles. Almost boiling water going through all that stuff does not sit right with me. Plus, this stuff is not biodegradable. You can't recycle it for the most part. The inventor of the K-Cup regrets inventing it. He thought it would just be used for office places. He didn't think it would explode like it did. Um, the thing is, if you have a machine and you really, really like it, sometimes they have options like this. It's an eco brew, but this one still has plastic. But I found one on Amazon that's made 100% of stainless steel. That way you can use it not worrying about plastic or aluminum at all. But the last part that really bothers me about K-cup machines or Keurig machines is that you put the water in the machine, the water lines in there never drain. So the water can be sitting there for days at a time, warm, uh, humid environment, dark, that's a bacteria city, you guys. I just don't think we should be doing K-cups, but if you do and you love your machine and you treat it right, get the stainless steel one below. Let's talk about bagged coffee. Now, this part of the video isn't gonna be so much about recommendations. I can't tell you that I love this one because you might hate it. This is very subjective. This is all about your flavor profile. It's like me telling you, hey, only drink Berlot, don't drink uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. And then if you're a Paul Giamatti in Sideways, you're gonna say, I'm not drinking any freaking Merlot. So let's just talk about coffee buying tips for the bagged coffee. I would always, if possible, buy whole beans in the bag. And here's why. Whole beans, once they're in the bag, will stay fresh for three months. And the reason why is this thing right here, the one-way valve on here. It lets the carbon dioxide out, but no air in. That's very important because after you roast beans, they're essentially alive, right? They're aging, they're letting off carbon dioxide. When it's in a bag sealed like this, fresh beans will stay fresh for three months. The second you cut this bag open and let air in there, it's like the walking dead, right? As soon as you get bit, you have a good 24 hours until you're gonna turn, right? Enjoy those 24 hours. Well, as soon as you open, as soon as you open this bag, we're talking three weeks of peak freshness, meaning these beans are gonna taste the best they've ever tasted for three weeks. If you buy ground coffee, which some of these here are, then you don't know how long it's been ground for, you don't know how long it's sitting in the bag. So once you grind beans, you only have one week of optimal flavor. Is it good past that? Yeah, of course. You could drink coffee after six months or 12 months, it's fine. But we're talking about coffee that has subtle flavor notes. So once you grind it, 10 days. Once you open a bag for whole beans, three weeks. So what do I recommend? I recommend buying enough for one week, grinding it, and then doing it again the next week. And if you don't have a grinder at home, don't buy an expensive one. See what they have around the corner here? Every grocery store has a grinder, right? Even if uh, you go to Costco, they have a grinder. Trader Joe's, you can go to the coffee shop in your neighborhood. They will grind it for you, which is why I recommend buying the whole beans, enough for one week, grind it, and then coming back for more. I wouldn't buy those big bags at Costco because by the time you get to the bottom, they're gonna be quite stale and the flavor is not gonna be good. Now let's talk about origin or single origin coffee. What does that mean? Look at these coffees here. They tell you where they're from. Costa Rica, Ethiopia, El Salvador. This is what's called single origin coffee. And it's really nice because you know exactly where the beans come from. They're not mixing mystery beans from around the world into a blend. And if they have a blend, like this Intelligentsia one here, it tells you it's a blend of Ethiopian and Nicaraguan. So 
I'm at Whole Foods, right? These are little premium style coffees. These are local coffees. Okay, we're back. The customer got their soy milk there. Um, I'm at Whole Foods. These are premium single origins. If you go to the Walmart, like I did for research for this video, you'll see bags of Dunkin' Donuts and other stuff like that. Those are probably a mix of beans from different parts of the world, and they're usually inferior beans. But if you like it, that's all that matter. But apply the same principles I said before. Buy one small bag, grind enough for a week, and then refill it. But if you can, buy ones that tell you where they're from. This is El Salvador. It's single origin. I know that. It's not mystery beans, right? Now, does organic matter? So I see organic French Allegro roast. Does that matter? It's a tricky question because I'd say if you care about health per se, it doesn't really matter. If you care about the environment, it matters more because coffee beans are the priciest agricultural product in the world. But they're also the most dirty, the most sprayed because these farmers are oftentimes poor in third world countries. They want to protect their investment. So they spray the crud out of these uh, coffee trees. The thing is coffee beans are protected by a cherry, a very thick bud, and they're roasted afterwards. So another dramatic pause. It's not that big of a deal, right? Because it doesn't really penetrate into the bean, but it does matter for the environment around. And these are oftentimes in rainforest, very sensitive areas that are very eco-friendly. So it is bad for the environment. And if you're getting organic, it's usually fair trade. So the uh, farmer is getting a fair amount for his coffee beans. And you know they're doing it the right way. Beans are supposed to be grown in the rainforest in shade. A lot of shady uh, farmers are actually plowing open fields and planting uh, coffee beans there for more money. If you buy the organic ones or the single source, you know they're doing it right. So you don't have to buy organic, just know it's better for the environment. All right, on the Flav City Instagram, there were some popular questions and one of those were, which is a Bobby approved flavored coffee? And the answer my friend is, nothing i did a lot of research on that they actually don't have flavored coffee here because at whole foods they don't carry anything with artificial flavors and most flavored coffees are artificial or have the dreaded natural flavors and if you watch my natural flavorings video after this one you know natural flavors are another word for artificial flavors so i can't get behind the psl the pumpkin spice even though we're going into that season another very big question was low acid coffees and i understand that because you might have stomach issues acid reflux if you want low acid coffees it's about the region really right sumatran coffee beans from indonesia low in acid the problem is the price is pretty high right now because i had that natural disaster last year central american uh, coffees tend to be lower in acid um, so you can look for that on the origin but i did some research and there's two really good high quality organic coffees that are low acid on amazon one is called java planet from colombia and one is called don pablo from honduras i will leave those links down below and uh, volcanic areas also if beans are grown near those they're high in acid because the uh, soil is very high in acid too instant coffee was a very popular question too and you might scoff at that if you're a coffee aficionado but a lot of people like the simplicity and ease of uh, instant coffee but for that reason i would avoid the traditional ones like the folgers and uh, the traditional ones we know because it's very low quality coffee and we're talking about like bottom of the barrel beans that oftentimes have imperfections are overripe they're uh, underripe they're highly roasted to cover up those notes with the burnt notes this one mount hagen is one of the best brands out there it's german i'm assuming it's pronounced hagen not hagen um, very high quality uh, instant coffee that you can normally get on amazon i'll put the link down below but if you're whole foods shopper they have it here but the most exciting instant coffees are actually in my cart here they're from the internet that's yeah, right more contraband i bring in from the outside you can't get these anywhere. This one first is uh, Laird Superfood. This is a uh, online, you know Laird Hamilton, the surfer? This is him, right? Laird Hamilton, his wife, Gabrielle Reese, the famous beach volleyballer. He has the most amazing line called Laird Superfood. They make InstaFuel. They also make coffee creamers. We talk about that in the coffee review video, coffee creamer review video. Look at these ingredients, you guys. Coconut milk powder, organic coconut sugar. They now make one without sugar. Uh, Freeze-dried Arabica beans. Aquamin, which is calcium from seaweed. Organic extra virgin coconut oil, amazing ingredients. And here's another one here also. This is a Four Sigmatic. This is a LA-based startup that infuses mushrooms into coffee and teas. Not the mushrooms that'll get you high and loopy from the 70s. Superfood mushrooms that help your immune system, help your brain. These are fantastic instant coffees. These are fantastic instant coffees. I will leave the Amazon links down below. They ain't got this one at the grocery store. Another popular request on the Flav City Instagram was decaf coffee. What kind of decaf to buy? And it's a very good question because there's 
two different ways, primarily two different ways they extract caffeine from beans. There's via chemicals, which are very harsh, and via Swiss water. Swiss water is what you want to look for. No chemicals at all. They soak the beans in water for about 10 to 12 hours. The water passes through the beans. Because beans are very porous, the caffeine leaches out. The other way with chemicals, not good at all. Like they say all the chemicals leave the beans, but I would not trust that process. A lot of restaurants, a lot of grocery stores that carry traditional decaf, they use chemicals. You gotta look for Swiss water uh, decaf. But keep in mind, the USDA says to be decaffeinated, it can still have up to 3% of caffeine. So if you're super duper sensitive to caffeine, keep in mind, 3% of it is still gonna have caffeine in there. All right, I think that covers the bagged coffee section. Before we head over to the cold brew section, you're thinking, what about coffee storage, right? Well, I would not put the coffee beans in the fridge or the freezer because coffee beans are very porous. If you put them in the freezer, they're gonna soak up the flavors of the freezer. So like onions, carrots, even if you put them in a uh, airtight sealed container, the cold air forces the oils to the surface and that actually ages them quicker. And the same is true for the fridge. You do not want that. It actually makes the shelf life a lot lower. Now, let's go check out some cold brews. Cold brew is very interesting for a couple reasons. Number one, it has less caffeine than regular coffee and 67% less acid than hot coffee, which is really good for people with sensitive tummies. Go for generally straight up black uh, cold brew coffee, water and coffee beans. Once you start go to the flavored ones, like you'll see, natural flavors can appear and sugar can be astronomical. So anything that's just water and coffee is good, except there's a brand called Stoke. Stoke adds natural flavors to their base cold brew coffee, which is crazy to me. Um, so if you want to go flavored, I just saw this yesterday. There's a new brand called Picnic. And they actually make a keto creamer I knew about. Now they're making keto cappuccino. This could be the most exciting coffee drink in the grocery store. Look at this, you guys. They use grass-fed butter, grass-fed whey protein concentrate, whey uh, MCTs and coffee, and there's zero sugar in here. One gram of sugar. That is so exciting because I did some research over at uh, uh, Walgreens, no, at uh, uh, Walmart, and the Dunkin' Donuts coffee with uh, sugar and milk had 39 grams of sugar. The uh, Starbucks Frappuccino had 41 grams of sugar, guys. That's 10 teaspoons of white sugar added to it. Some of it's natural from the milk, but that's like liquid diabetes. That is crazy, you guys. If you want to go to other flavored ones, I'd recommend the original Bulletproof one. Um, ingredients are once again are great. You have uh, grass-fed butter and MCTs, and they're using stevia. But the other ones, the vanilla, even the collagen original, has natural flavors. Uh, something like La Colum is actually really good, and they have it at Walmart. So you have a total of nine sugars, which you want to stay under 10 when it comes to coffee drinks. No natural flavors. You'll notice a lot of these drinks here, the cappuccino drinks, have sodium phosphates. That's a preservative. But most of the ones, including the uh, mocha, the one they have at Walmart, is good from La Colombe. Be careful with chameleon because the Mexican coffee, even though it only has 11 grams of sugar, has natural flavors, which we know there's nothing natural about it. So as long as you know the sugars and how to read the label, you can guide yourself through here pretty easily. But there is one called a Rebel, which is around the corner. Looks really interesting. Let me grab that and come back. You guys, next level ingredients here. Rebel, cold brew coffee, and protein. Well, first of all, we're talking about 12 grams of plant-based protein in the form of organic pea protein here, which is fantastic. Plus, only four grams of sugar here because, is that for us? <laughs> because they're using uh, stevia, which is fantastic. How does it taste though? That's the question, my friends. That's fantastic. You guys, the ingredients on all of the ones over there looks fantastic. They have a maca mocha, and it doesn't have coffee, but it tastes like a cafe mocha. A little more sugar with nine grams, but look at these ingredients. Next level, you guys, prebiotic fiber, chicory root, Himalayan sea salt. This one tastes like an iced cafe mocha, but no caffeine. Super, super cool, you guys. I'm gonna have a caffeine buzz. I'm gonna be like Kramer from Seinfeld. You want a cafe latte? I'll get you a cafe latte. Let's go talk about, dramatic pause again, coffee creamers. Now, I don't wanna spoil it, but we do have a full coffee creamer video, which you can watch as soon as this video is done. It covers creamers and non-dairy creamers, goes super deep, but I just picked this one up from the refrigerated aisle. This is a brand that I've never seen in store before. It's Picnic and it's Keto Creamer. And it's the same one that makes that uh, cappuccino drink we just saw over there that's keto friendly, grass-fed butter, grass-fed whey protein concentrate, and uh, the sweetener is, there is no sweetener. So that's fantastic. Also right next to me, 
the Vital Proteins Keto Collagen Creamer with coconut. Stick to the coconut one because the other ones have natural flavor. What I love about this, ingredients are fantastic organic coconut milk powder, but you're getting your daily dose of collagen. I'm huge on collagen. I take two scoops every day, one in my morning coffee and tea, one in my afternoon smoothie. In addition to the collagen, it comes along with 10 grams of grass-fed protein, which is fantastic. As you get older, I'm 41. I don't know if you know that, but yes, I'm 41. Uh, your natural collagen goes down in your body. This is a great supplement. It's also great for your hair, your skin, your nails, and your teeth. And then right behind Arch, I'm ruining the video right now. There's still plenty more in that video. Nut pods are great and they're on sale. Look at that price right now. They're on sale for another two weeks. This is a great non-dairy one. Get the plain one because the other ones have natural flavors. There's also some amazing keto creamers in that video too, but I'll put the Amazon links down below for you too. All right, my family, that is it. The coffee review video is done. I'm all hopped up on caffeine right now. Art didn't have any, which means I'm gonna fly for the rest of the day. But hey, at least now you know what to buy and what to avoid at the grocery store, but where to next, right? You vote, you decide, we make the videos, unless we get kicked out. Then no videos get made, but we got two more of those videos going below us right now. Art and I will see you very, very soon. Until then, we say unto you what we always do. Hashtag, keep on cooking, mad love and peace. peace.